Hey guys, hope you're having a blessed day. Uh, the Lord's put on my heart to teach and to show and to demonstrate the pathways into the rivers of peace. So peace is, is a, a promise that Jesus gave us. Peace, peace for your soul, peace that flows out of your spirit. There's many opportunities in this world to not have peace, to have your peace stolen, to be, have a troubled heart or a troubled, or a troubled spirit or a troubled soul. And today I'm going to talk about the, the promise of peace, but as important how to get into that peace and how to tap in, walk in the spirit, receive the spirit of peace, um, which we've already gotten, but how to manifest, not by our own self, but to See God's peace wash over your soul, regardless of the circumstances of what's going on. So it's really important to, to listen to everything that's going to happen from here on out. Um, from this opening prayer, to the scriptures, to the very ending, where I'll be praying for people who may not have peace, or if your hearts are troubled right now. Um, or confusion, or pain, or vexation, or unanswered questions, and so many things that can steal your peace. We're going to walk into the promise of peace, and we're going to demonstrate it. And I'm going to give you techniques that the Lord showed me, scriptural, scriptural. And when, I, when you're like, techniques, you're like, what do you mean? I'm talking about, if you don't have peace... How to get peace now, right now, not some by and by time. I'm talking about how to choose to walk in the spirit, how to choose to apply God's word, how to choose to, to talk to the Lord who's here in the temple. Jesus said, my father and I will abide and come and make a dwelling in you. I will send you the comforter and he will live in you. So I'm not talking to the father who's a quadrillion, quadrillion, billion miles away, though his physical being may be, he's here right now in this born-again temple. And are all the promises, which are yes and amen. He carries them. The same spirit which raised Christ Jesus from the dead is now in you, quickening you, and making you alive. It's a Bible. So he's here, and we're going to walk into that promise. All right, so first and foremost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray over this. This what? This is a time that the Lord set for you to be here, to hear a teaching that you may have not heard or need exhort exhortation in to reapply. And I know what happens. Satan wants to come and distract people, or snag people, or snare people. And I'm going to say no to that. So that's why I pray right now, and we're praying this way. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your spirit and this preordained time of your anointing, of your grace, of your teaching. I thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus covers us. Lord, forgive us for any sin. Forgive us, Father, for any trespasses. As your, as your servant David said, those known and those unknown. Lord, cleanse all of those spots by your mercy and by, and by our repentance. Renew a right spirit and cleanse my hands, Father. Thank you for this, Lord. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus... I rebuke every distraction. I rebuke every raven. And I break Satan's power. I pray the authority, Father, of a believer over us, this atmosphere, this video, over those listening in their home. I rebuke you, Satan. You have no portion over them. I pray the blood of Jesus over their soul, spirit, soul, and body. 
Father, that they would have eyes to see and ears to hear. That we would speak the mysteries of God that are not a mystery, just unknown or untaught. And that we would walk in thy kingdom, thy ways, thy kingdom come, your will be done. So I praise you, Lord, for information, knowledge, the word, that we would have it and walk in it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. I just love you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, what did Jesus do? Oftentimes, he did what? He went around teaching. Faith comes how? It's impossible. For, first, let's start in the, in the basics of it. It's impossible to please God without faith. That's the Bible. So then, I need faith. Everyone has been given a measure of faith. So everyone has a measure, a mustard seed. Maybe not a tree, or maybe a little bit bigger, or a mustard seed. But everyone's been given a measure, but it needs to grow. How does faith grow? By hearing and hearing the Word of God. That's in Romans. So we hear the Word of God in a specific area, and this is going to be the topic of peace, so that we can get understanding. Understanding teaches us, well, knowledge is first the revelation of how God's kingdom works. Understanding is the application of how his kingdom works, and wisdom is the, is the how-to, the when-to, and so forth of how his kingdom. Like me praying in the beginning of this, of this video is wisdom. It was based on knowledge, a discovery, and then understanding, application, and wisdom. I'm going to be teaching. I understand what's going to happen, so I'm going to plow into this and I'm going to bind that devil and say, you can't come into this. So that's the application of spiritual warfare so that you can hear this message right here that's being served up to you about peace. So now, Jesus went about doing what? Teaching. And teaching starts to build what? Faith or knowledge or understanding so that you can walk in the ways of the kingdom. Seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God, which is how he does things. And his righteousness, which is, it's freely given through Jesus Christ. It was freely given to all. And then all these things will be added unto you. So, that's why we're talking about this. We're moving into this teaching right now about peace. Peace is one of the most important things that you and I need to have. It guards our heart and our mind, Philippians 4, 6. Peace guards our heart and our mind. Why didn't he say mind and mind or, or heart and heart? Because it's our spirit man and our mind. They both have to have peace. Our spirit man has peace, but if our soul man takes a dive, means walking out of peace or being anxious, that is the opposite of faith, and you can't be plugged into both outlets at the same time. Peter, walk. Peter, sink. Fear, it just it's one or the other. So Jesus wants us to have this peace. Why is it so important? Because there's a lot of... In this world, you'll have trouble with a capital T. And it's very easy to scroll through the internet and see all kinds of trouble. And that trouble does what? It preaches to you. It does. Some of you have probably stopped watching a lot of TV and YouTube videos um, and even prophetic words. Not all of them are prophetic. Some are very opposite of that. And you may have become just solically wore out. The Lord doesn't want us to stick our head in the sand and just say, whatever will be, will be. He wants us to walk in dominion, and he wants us to walk in power. And above in, and inside of that, he wants us to have peace. The peace that Jesus had was what? Where was the most, when you could, for me, when I think about Jesus and I think about his ability to, to walk in peace, I think about him 
sleeping in that boat. The storm of the world, that storm was demonic. Or the, however, it just came up out of the blue and it was meant there, or the Lord allowed it to happen, or he had angels blowing it up there just to, just to test, however it came to, to, to bear. Jesus was doing what? Sleeping. Why? Because he had peace. He believed his word. What was his word? Hey guys, let's go to the other side of the lake. We're going to the other side of the lake. He didn't say we're going to the middle of the lake and we're going to sink and all of us are going to die. Except for me, because I'm the son of God, so hey, tough luck. He didn't say that. He said, we're going across. And the disciples, mostly of, most of them being fishermen, all of them being acquainted with the water, being by the Sea of Galilee, knows what storms can do. And those storms started to speak quite loudly to them. And their hearts began to get, what, troubled. The storm blowing on the outside became a storm on the inside. And the storm on the inside is what created fear. Fear is the opposite. This is faith. This is not. And fear made them panic, like they were going to die. But Jesus was walking in so much peace that he was sleeping in the middle of that. Wouldn't you like that? Do you think we may have an opportunity for that in the future? Troubling storms. Sure, some of you don't need to have end time storms. Some of you already have enough storms in your life. You're like, yeah, my kids, my spouse, my friends, my job, my boss, my coworker. My, 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 there's so many opportunities for trouble already, let alone look deeper into the news or two years ago, all the things that happened during the sickness. There's a lot of opportunities to look at the storm and there's a lot of opportunities to get troubled. But Jesus didn't, didn't have that. And peace is a tangible thing, guys. You've had it before, and you and I can walk in it again. But it's not like the world. Peace does not come from a six-digit six salary. Peace does not co come from a full cupboard. Peace does not come from a brand new car with a 36 um, 36,000 mile, three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty with brand new tires. And I know I won't have to worry about anything now for at least three years. That's not peace. That's worldly peace. Peace doesn't come from, well, I live on this side of the tracks now. Um, or I moved out into XYZ and I'm away from these people. Peace doesn't come from that. That's carnal, worldly. And it goes on and on. You can't change your circumstances enough to create peace. And you can't protect yourself enough to insulate yourself from what's coming in this world. If we are truly in the end times and things are truly going to be biblical, end of the book biblical, Tell me how you're going to have peace. Now, you and I won't be here. But tell me how you would have peace when an asteroid the size of a mountain is falling towards the oceans, that's called Wormwood, and is going to destroy one-third of the entire oceans and ocean-going vessels. And then enough poisonous debris falls down and it destroys and pollutes a third of all of the water on the planet. You can dig a big enough hole and isolate yourself. You're never going to have that peace. You can't control that. You can't control that. That's worldly peace. So what am I saying? Quit trying. 
And some of you know that. Some of you don't. So what do we do? And how do we get what Jesus had? Was it because he was the son of God? That he had peace? And it was just because of him? No, we look to the word. We look to the lamp of the word. Psalms 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word, Father, is a shield for those who put their trust in them. Your word is perfect and true. Proverbs 30, verse 5. All of the promises of God are yes and amen. That's 1 Corinthians. We look to the word. God's word will sustain me. God's well, That's in Psalms 119 also. God's word, sustain, mean sustain. The Hebrew word for sustain means to sustain, but it also means to quicken, to make alive. Your word not only is a light of direction, your word is spirit and truth. John 6, 63. Your word is a spiritual force. So when I'm teaching these things and I'm speaking this, I'm speaking the word of God and it should be doing what? It should be cleansing because it does. It starts to cleanse and realign and starts to change your mind. Because it, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, Hebrews 4, 12. It divides soul, soul, meat head, meat locker, from spirit, spirit man. I need and you need to walk in the spirit man, not, you know, dirt. <laughs> Though this, you can't get avoid this, so it has to be trained and it has to be washed and it has to be cleansed from the debris of fear, from the debris of, of, of this world and the training of conformed thinking. Be renewed in the spirit. Be transformed, not conformed. The things of this world crush and press to make you into the image of death and destruction. But the words of God are life that wash and renew you. So we look into this word deeply. We gaze into it with a heart of meditation and we draw up out of this word by through the power of God through the Holy Spirit one of the things that I do that Tara and I do whenever we pray which is always every day whenever we read the word which is every day why do I do that because the word tells me to read the word every day and I'm in love with the father it isn't a religious ceremony well i have to read the word and it's seven o'clock and if i don't read the word for five minutes i don't get what i need out of the vending machine of God. that's not how it works it doesn't work that way i go to the lord and i abide make a dwelling place with him because i desire him and i seek him early and i do what joshua 1 and 9 and 10 has told me to do which is what read the word day, read the word at night, Joshua, and you will find success. And in that, I am, I am applying these principles, the kingdom, that we talked about in the beginning, that changes me. So now peace. Let's find the promise. Let's find this, this advocate, this, this promise and see if it, it's, if I can really, and you and I can really have it. It's throughout the Bible, but we're going to look at one spot. And you know, some of you already know, it's John 14. I love John 14 and 15. These two chapters are just juice, man. They are so good, John 16. <sighs> but Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. And all these, and we'll just start at John 25. All this I've spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all things and will remind you of everything. So you're not doing this just on your own. The Holy Spirit's here with you, speaking, and, and many of you may have peace already as the Holy Spirit's bearing witness with this message. His Spirit is bearing witness with, in your spirit with this message, which is still His Spirit, to say yes and amen. Listen. He will remind you of everything I have said to you. And then he goes right into uh, 27, which is amazing. Peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. So Jesus just said, the peace that I carry and the peace that I received from the Father. Basically, he's saying, can you, can you, can you put your mind around that? That Jesus said, the very same peace that I have, that sleeping in the bow of the boat in the middle of the storm kind of peace. I'm going to give you that. That ability to have peace. And I'm going to give it to you. My peace I leave with you. When he goes, he's leaving that peace, that, that, that comfort through the Holy Spirit, that comfort, that literal sense of everything's okay, even if your head doesn't understand it. That's what this peace does. When the Spirit of God comes into your mind, and when your spirit of when the Spirit of God comes into your your soul from your spirit, and that peace rises up, it it surpasses all of your logical understanding. And it gives that mind rest. And Jesus said that that's his promise for you. Peace I leave with you, my peace. I do not give to you as the world gives. We went through that already. All those cars don't give you three or 36,000 mile warranties and homes and avoidance type of, 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 of management, of peace. That, that's, that's, that's worldly peace. I'm giving you peace where you could be um, um, Paul and Silas in a prison or Peter and Silas, whoever it was, and they're praising the Lord in the middle of a prison or Paul when he's on a, on a, on a, on a slave ship or prisoner ship and the storms are blowing for days, days. And the Lord said to him, no, nobody will die, but you got to follow my word. If they follow my word, which is the way the Lord works, if you follow his word, you can eat the fruit of that. And then, as Jesus does so often, he will say a promise, and then he will say a warning. Like, the Lord's Supper, he says, forgive. When he teaches them, you know, forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he finishes up the Lord's Supper. What's the very first thing he goes into after that? When you stand, when you pray, if you haven't forgiven, go for he talks about forgiveness right away. Why? Because if you have ought in your heart and you haven't forgiven, you won't be forgiven. So don't come to me and bring your, bring your prayers to me if you are walking in unforgiveness. It was a big deal to him. And once again, in his same fashion, he does what? Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Because you can't have both. So the Lord is saying, I'm going to give you my peace. I'm going to let your peace, my peace, reside in you. But don't let you, you don't let your heart be troubled. And don't be afraid. It's a choice. What? It is. It's a battle, but it's a choice. So now we talked about what? The promise. We've talked about that Jesus wants you to have that. And now you can understand that you have peace. And that peace in that and that Psalms 23 is another promise. That you are, he is your good shepherd. He leads you beside quiet waters. He gives you green pastures. That's a peaceful picture, isn't it? Yeah, 
What's the quiet waters? It isn't literally a field or a meadow. It is the Spirit of God, the water of the Spirit of God. Flow, a, a river shall flow out of your belly, the Holy Spirit. Out of your belly, the Holy Spirit shall come. Out of your spirit, man, and in your spirit resides who? Jesus Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit. His Word, all of that is right there, right here, right now, in between us and in us. So we have to learn to walk in the Spirit. Once you understand that peace is a covenant promise to you, that God said, I've given you, that Jesus said, I'm going, I'm leaving, the Holy Spirit's with you, He will remind you of all things, and you have my peace. I'm leaving it and giving it to you. Go sleep in some boats. No matter what the storm is, you can do this. Well, I'm not doing it. Well, because maybe you're being afraid. Or maybe the circumstances. Or maybe you haven't been trained. Or maybe you don't realize that you can have peace. So now, what do I do? When I, I do, when, mm, what do I do when I get up every morning? Go, ugh, that's what I do. My soul man does not wake up. My soul man doesn't wake up and go, yay, woohoo. Some of you may, mine doesn't. Sometimes, but most times, it's just like, here we are. Um, everything I do from there on in is a choice. Choice, I know, to go and get into the Word. Now, I may stay there for five or ten minutes or a half hour. But I know the principles of God, the truth and the way the word works and I, the way his word is. So I will get up, I will go in and I will start quoting my scriptures. Why? To tell my brain, this is the truth. And that word is a sword and it starts to stir what? As Paul said to Timothy, Paul said what to Timothy? He said, fan the flame, which is a choice. Timothy, you fan the flame. Don't let those embers, those coals go out. You fan it. It isn't God. Come fan my flame. Now, will he? Yes. The helper, not the doer. The helper. Yes, it's his power. Yes, it's his grace. Yes, yes, yes. But you have a choice and you have to engage your will. He doesn't come and crucify your flesh. You crucify your flesh. With what? His power, his great name, his mighty, his mighty word, his anointed word, and, and, and. And in that, he comes with you, and he overtakes you, and he overshadows you. And you do what? Rise in him, on the spirit of his wings, on the strength of his anointing. So you, you come into a place where, let's say you have been stressed out because of a job situation. Let's say you've made tons of bad decisions or you don't even know if you made bad decisions because things keep going and like like that like a train wreck in slow motion it just keeps spit and it's been a year or two years or three weeks or whatever it is you're like when is this gonna stop? I want off. Right? It doesn't matter. Peace is peace and you and I have that so whenever these things are there, let's say if you're in the extreme end of that, where everything's just roached, man, it's just totally in a bad spot. What I do and what I've done, I, I'm not doing that now because I'm in a good spot. And I've been eating his word and seeing the blessings of his promises for a while. Have I had trials? Sure. Have I had things try to come up? Yep. And Jesus Christ and, and I have defeated all of them so far. Overnight? Nope. But everything everything that isn't his word dies. Doesn't, doesn't have a place. Does not have a place. Period. Am I still waiting on some things? Yep. But I have not had a train wreck. And I'm thankful for that. Have I been in train wrecks? Oh, yeah. Have I been... <laughs> the cause of some of them? Yup. Have I done things that haven't been the wisest, even while things are going up? Sure. Um, 
But it's still the same principle, no matter where you're at with the Lord. Get sin out if there's sin. Repent. How do you do that? Just repent. Get fear out. How do you do that? Just, sorry, Lord. I'm going to trust you. But my heart is torn. My heart is this. Or I'm just, how do you come before the Lord? First, cleanse your heart of anything. It doesn't matter. Forgive. Make sure you're under forgiveness. Make sure your words have not snared you. That's scriptural. That's in Proverbs. It's a big, 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 big thing. Here, I'll read it real quick, just so you can understand that the Word of God shows how big it is. It says it in James, and we've taught that a lot in this channel, on this channel. But you've got to take care of that too. Proverbs 21, 23. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. So if you haven't guarded your tongue and you've done what James said you shouldn't do, you may have a few fires burning in your life because of you. Just, it's scriptural. What do you mean, Mark? James 3, verse 5, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but makes great boasts. Consider what the tongue, um, what great forest fire is set by small spark. The tongue, verse 6, the tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire. Well, how does it do that? And itself is, how is the tongue set on fire? And itself, is, and itself is set on fire by hell. So demonic influences, worldly con comfort, things trying to conform, breach through, and the waves of, of fear, which are demonic, are now in you and you say. And now fire starts burning all over the place. Because you're, you're operating in the principles of this world. The princes of this world, is this world is ruled by the words. 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 Ruled by God. Ruled by men. Given to men. And ruled through words. And this is what the scripture says. So now you have to break those things. And how do you do it? Just repent. My words are, I'm, who is the author and the finisher of my own words? Me. I just choose to not let my mouth light my, 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 <laughs> my own life on fire. So you repent for those things and, and break them. Yes. You know, I was going through a, a, a small list. You know, I have, I have um, a small um, business, Tara, Tara does. Um, and we're, and there's just this little hiccup going on where a couple of things aren't, aren't moving as they normally would. And we're going through this inventory of like, all right, Lord, what's going on? You know, I've bound the devil and it still hasn't changed. I said, is it anything I've spoken? And Lord, forgive me and bring, remind me, Holy Spirit, if there's things that I've said over that. And, and or is it just a, a, a test or, 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 you know, I'm just pondering through this and looking through the spiritual um, checklist of like, okay, Lord, you know, it seemed like this thing got turned off pretty quickly. Um, what's, what, how and why? Is there something I've I've done? Um, is it an adversary, or is it just you know you we need to be looking at something else? I don't know. So that's how serious I take those things, even on the smallest things. But you need to take it even on the biggest things because that's what the Bible says. So now you take care of that. You take care of any sins. You take care of offenses. Um, you take care of those things. You 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 go through those things before the Lord. You ask Him to cleanse your heart from any sin, and then. How do you enter his courts? With thanksgiving in your heart, you enter his courts with praise. Start with thanking him. And then you walk into that. And you thank him, and you glorify him, and you magnify him, and you talk about how good he is. And, and you remind yourself of those things. And what you're doing is you are choosing spiritual principles to worship the Lord, and he will he will envelop and he will come and he will walk with you through this. And guess what happens when all of that anxiousness and all those things start getting pushed away? Peace starts coming out from your soul, spirit, into your soul. 
So, what I want to do here is to walk through that. Literally just do it right now. For anyone. Now, if those of you who have already, who know this, and this has just been a great teaching, great teaching, and, and if this has just been a reminder for you, um, I'm thankful for you. Pray. Pray for those who would be watching this video that that are struggling or need strength. Because we're going to be praying for them right now. And we're going to see peace come into their, into their spirit man. And we're going to see peace, because their spirit man has peace, but we're going to see peace flood up into their soul. And, and we're going to have peace. Because the word says we already have it, Jesus promised it, so we're going to have it. And God is going to wash over you. And I'm showing you, why am I doing it this way? Because it's a choice. And I'm, and I'm obeying the word. And I'm going to walk in the word. And God is going to do what? Well, he watches over his word. That's Isaiah 55, 11. That his word would not return void. Well, Mark, you're saying you can do that right now? Yes, right now. Not peace someday in the future. The peace he's already given to me. It's already mine. I'm not asking for it. When did it come? The moment I became born again. The keys of the kingdom were given to me. And you. You just may not operate in it or know it. When Jesus took off, he left. Us. His ministry. His anointing. The Holy Spirit. In different forms and levels. He distributed the gifts to men, but the peace of God and the promises of God all are ours. All of them. Peace is given to everyone. So you and I have this choice right now, and that's what we're going to see is peace. So let's walk into this. Father, I just give you glory and I praise you, Father, for the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Jesus. <sighs> I love you, and I thank you for this peace. And I thank you that it was a promise given to me, given to everyone listening right now, everyone who's, who said, Jesus, come into my life. I believe in you. And if you're here and you've never heard the, the, this message or even are a believer, just believe in Jesus Christ, and he will make you born again right now. And that peace will come in. And the promises of God will change your life. Lord, thank you for our salvation. The moment we believed upon you and you came into our spirit, you set us, you set us apart for your own pleasure and you set us apart and gave us good things, which is your spirit, your entire kingdom. You paid for us to have. Not just peace in the sense of reconciliation that we're no longer enemies, but literally the peace you said you would leave. Your peace, because you weren't an enemy when you said that. So it is more than just a reconciliation of, of, of peace, no longer an enemy. It's literally the peace that you had, you said you were leaving. So a tangible force of life-changing, life-altering peace that surpasses all understanding is ours. So Lord... I thank you for this peace, and I praise you for your word. And I thank you that this peace washes me, washes everyone on this channel, washes everyone that's listening to, to these prayers. Say yes, say amen. Receive that peace. So, Lord, wash over, cleanse us from anything that would obstruct that. Forgive us, Father, for any focusing on a bank account or a check account or a lack of a job or, 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 or. The list is large. We're not going to be a litany of it, but forgive us, Lord, because we are focusing on you. I need your peace right now, and you said I could have it. So come in, comforter. Abide. And we dwell with you. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Father, we thank you. That you are good. 
Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you are so you are so good. You are worthy. You are worthy of praise, Jesus. You are worthy of praise, Father. Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Wash us. Lord, praise you. Now, see, I praise you, Lord. I just feel his peace right now. Break through, Father. Break through their hearts. Break through the atmosphere. Break through, Father. Every device and every division, every scorn and every mark that would come against their soul. Father, I forgive and I release and I thank you that your people, Father, taste and see that you are so good. Set us free, Jesus, according to your promise that you came to set the captives free. So Satan, I break your powers of torment. Satan, I destroy your yokes and bondages. I destroy your words. I destroy your power. I destroy your kingdom. Go from these people. Go in Jesus' name. I set hedges over them. I set boundaries in their lives. And I thank you. Peace flow. Rise, river of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great heaven. Great is our God. Great is our King. Worthy of praise. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel the snares and the chains breaking and the atmosphere changing. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise you. Hallelujah. 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 He's good. <laughs> He's good. Pause it. Pause the video. Turn off. Walk in that peace. Enjoy it. Praise you. Praise you, praise you, Lord. If you need that peace or you need agreement, come back to this video, save it, bookmark it, come back to the prayer. That word that I spoke was a declaration and peace broke through. And that was a powerful anointing and grace that came in and, and moved things out in, in your room and your, ad, and your adversaries had to bow down because it was the power of God by command of God through this vessel to tell it to go. And that's why things changed. It wasn't an accident. It was purposeful, and you feel that. And that's the authority that you have also. So use this anointing, use this video, use it. Train yourself to walk in this. And don't let your heart be troubled. And if it is, just get back up. And get back up on the water and walk back in the boat and do it again. Don't get discouraged. Because it takes time to sometimes walk in these principles. If it's new to you, it's like you're like you're growing in this. And it's like an infant just starting to walk. If you fall down and bump your knee, whatever, keep getting up. And God will strengthen you and build you. I love you. God loves you. This was his message for you. And I pray that you walk in it. Absorb this word. Meditate on it. And you take it with you. And be. Be changed and do do the same thing.
for others and for yours and for the kingdom of God. God bless you. Be strong. Yes, it's a challenge. You be strong and in the power of his might. And the Lord your God will go before you and he will make all your way straight. That's his promise. I love you guys. Be blessed.